about like, okay, what are you doing in your life that's affecting you? Now, later on, they developed this public health model, which um, they started to see that there was issues with um, how people live, things they did, and how that affected their health. Okay, so if they did certain things, they might be sick. But sometimes they didn't really know why. Like early on, you know, they used to promote things like smoking, um, you know, as something that was okay for you or whatever. Even doctors would promote it because they didn't really know yet, like the damage it caused, right? The disease it caused. So once again, they started to realize that certain things were happening. But then around the 40s, this is around World War II. The focus, uh, the medical technology came along now where they started focusing on disease prevention. So what that means is we're trying to uh, be preventative, take care of our health preventatively, right? That means try to avoid things that make you sick. And we'll talk about what those are. But So as far as the health models, uh, you just have to know those three. Like I said, if you can answer or put those three in the first question, that's what you want to do. Um, just make sure you know what those three are. Um, so you can summarize them, you can type them, you can copy paste them, whatever you feel more comfortable with. Um, just answer it. Um, and I would, I would recommend that you follow along and do this as we're going along. Because if you wait and don't do it, and you don't turn it in, this is 20 points out of like 40 for your homework. And so it's about half your homework grade. So, you know, this is a chunk. So this is something you want to do. It just keeps you kind of um, focused on the, uh, the objectives. All right, those are the models. Those are the first thing you're going to answer. Uh, beyond that, there's another term that came into fashion. And, uh, it's called wellness. It came into fashion in the 60s. And so we figured out that health was not just one thing. It wasn't just like a, uh, a good shaped body or whatever. It was multiple things. And so they, that's what's called the aspects or dimensions of health. And what are those? There's six of them here. We're going to go through each one of them. Uh, there's social, intellectual, emotional, environmental, physical, and spiritual. So there's six dimensions of health. So you could be... Maybe you're good, uh, maybe you're physically healthy, like you're in really good shape and stuff, but maybe you suffer from mental health issues, or you suffer from social problems, or you suffer from um, emotional issues, things like that. So once again, um, it's not just one part of health, there's multiple parts of health, right? There's six parts, six dimensions of health, okay? So what wellness means is just, are you healthy in all these areas? Are you healthy in all six areas? All right, well that brings us to the definitions, and I think the second question revolves around these. Once again, you can either summarize these if you want, or copy paste, it's up to you. Um, let's go through these. So these aspects, I just want you to know the differences. Physical is uh, like body size and shape, meaning um, how, uh, how healthy your body is. So when you think about that, think about somebody who's like physically fit or in shape, right? They're, 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 they're not overweight, they're, you're able to function really well physically. So that's physical health. All right, social health is just uh, your health among your relationship among friends, family members, and partners. So how do you do social? So do you get along with people? That's social health, right? Do you get along with your family, your friends? Do you have a partner you get along with, right? That kind of thing. relationships, those things. Intellectual health is the ability to think clearly, reason objectively, and use brain power. So you think about it, when you come to school, you use a lot of this, right? You're using your brain power, your thinking to get things done. You have to take a test, you have to write an essay, something like that. You have to think, right? So that's intellectual health. So how's your mind working, right? Intellectual. That's different than mental health, actually. Mental health might be kind of related to emotional and spiritual. So emotional health is being able to express and control your emotions. So uh, how do you handle, handle things like sadness, anger, um, mood swings, right? Emotions. Are you somebody who's got a handle on that, or are you somebody who kind of are all over the place? People vary time to time, right? But some people have more control over that than others. Some people have issues with it. Spiritual health is a sense of meaning and purpose in your life. Um, some people might think that's religious. It's not it's just a, having a higher sense of purpose or meaning. So something bigger than yourself. And then environmental health is uh, understanding how the um, environmental the environment affects you. So hazards, working hazards. Um, an example of this would be like the air and water quality that we live in. Now here, sometimes you have better quality from a fire or smog, and so they say it's unhealthy to go outside and exercise and get like asthma and stuff. Um, and then, you know, here we have pretty clean water if you drink it, but other countries might not have water treatment, so a lot of people get sick from the water, right? So that's a, a measure of environmental health, like what is going on around you in the environment. So those are the six, right? Those are the six I want you to focus on. Um, just know what they are and, and what, what is the uh, main uh, kind of definition of 
So, and then you have the questions, and hopefully you've been kind of working on those as we've gone through the materials. Um, so we have the, the health has changed over time. Can you give me one example of how, how, how health has changed? Or one of those periods? Tell me what it is. Anybody want to volunteer or just call people? Or is there anybody who wants to offer an answer? <laughs> My other class, there's a couple of people who are just always speaking up. Some classes now. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just typically just, uh, just call somebody and uh, see if you have the answer. Um, this mail. Can you give me an example of how health has changed over time? Uh, definitions of health have changed over time from uh, focusing on your actual health and it's changed over time depending on uh, what they focus on. Like, you know, uh, of course, you have to focus on your actual health and now they check on things that could be affecting it. Okay, so. Um, yeah, so before they were just focused on like if you were sick, they treated you. Now they're kind of more into prevention, which means um, modern times, they're looking at the things that might make you sick, right? So you want to avoid those things. So in the, in the old times, it was just like, oh, you're sick over the doctor. We don't know what's causing it. Now it's like, oh, you have lung disease? Well, that's because you smoked for 20 years, right? So we know you probably shouldn't smoke for 20 years because it's going to cause disease. So um, once again, uh, the view of health has changed over time. Okay, what about the dimensions of health? Anybody want to throw out one of the ones they saw, or should we just call other people? Any volunteers? Uh, yeah. Physical. Okay, what is physical health? Uh, characteristics such as body type and shape. Okay, so like um, when you think of physical health, what do you think about? Like, how how fit they are? Yeah. Like they're in shape. Yeah. So maybe somebody exercises a lot, keeps their body in good shape, that kind of stuff, right? So that's one aspect. Of any others? Anybody else? Uh, oh, you can get another. Because there's six of them. You should kind of get another. What about Adrian? Do you think? Um, another dimension of health is uh, social. Okay, what does social mean? Uh, social includes um, maintaining a healthy relationship with your loved ones and friends. Sure. So, how do you get along with others, right? Friends, family, relationships. That's another aspect. So, how do you do social? One more, we call one more person. What's another one? Um, uh, do. Um, 
your spirituality, your intellectual abilities, all those, you want to cover all those areas. So it's not just about being fit, it's about being healthy in all those areas, okay? So good, um, so once again, uh, it's a very common answer. Somebody who's physically fit, right, in shape, that's what people think healthy is. But, um, you know, I'll tell you a lot, of, a lot of, you see a lot of uh, athletes and bodybuilders and things like that. I mean, some of them look good, but they take a lot of drugs and stuff like that, but not necessarily healthy. You know, they may be very unhealthy, but they, they look like, you, know, you might want to uh, build muscle or something like that, but they might not be getting there in, in the correct fashion because they might be using drugs and stuff like that. All right, health in the United States, logic too. So this is going to go to the second set of questions there. Um, it says, health choices are personal. BC's cause of overactivity, physical activity, birds, health care. So we're going to look at what's called Healthy People 2020. Um, so the first thing we look at is what are the four leading causes of disease? And these are the top four. And this will come up again, but it's tobacco. Tobacco, you can include vaping, so smoking. Um, excessive alcohol, so drinking too much. Lack of activity, so not getting exercise, and poor nutrition, eating a poor diet. And so a lot of people, you know, do water several of these things, and over time, it'll affect their health, right? And it'll start to cause issues. Um, a lot of these lifestyle choices uh, lead to uh, diseases. And so when you're down, you know, uh, you might be able to get away with a couple of these things and probably be okay because a young body kind of is good at repairing itself, but as you get older, it starts to catch up. So like at my age, um, at your parents' age, your parents are probably around my age, um, you know, things that they do, they, their health starts to become an issue into like your 50s and 60s and stuff. So once again, you have to kind of watch those things as you age. And it's probably better to do it earlier than later, because later you're going to have a lot of damage done. So you've got to kind of watch what you're doing. So those are the four things. Tobacco, too much drinking, alcohol, no physical activity, and poor nutrition. And a lot of us suffer you're not getting enough exercise, and you're getting poor food. We're going to talk about all that in different chapters. Okay? So with that, the Surgeon General puts out this thing called the Healthy People Plan 2020. And there's four goals in this, and we'll, the video will mention this. First off, the first goal is to obtain a higher quality, uh, longer life. So not only do you live longer, but you are healthy when you live longer. So a lot of old people, uh, they'll live longer, but they're, they're really like sick and unhealthy when they're older. So the goal is to make them have a functional life all the way until the end. <clears throat> health equity, eliminate disparities, and improve health for everyone. So we're going to try to get rid of uh, barriers to getting people healthy behaviors. Social and physical environments for promoting good health. We're going to, we're going to talk about that in the video, so promoting health. And then quality of life, health, life, and healthy behaviors in all life stages. So do that all the way through. So let me show you a video that kind of um, highlights a couple of subjects. Talks about how uh, communities can help to encourage health behaviors. Okay, so this is called Healthy People 2020. It's a video. Uh, let's see. In 2020 goals. What makes some people healthy and others unhealthy? How can we create a society in which everyone has a chance to live long, healthy lives? These are just a couple of the important questions that Healthy People 2020 explores. The range of personal, social, economic, and environmental factors that influence health status are known as determinants of health. Determinants of health include biological and genetic makeup, individual behavior, social interactions and norms, the physical environment, and access to health services. For example, stress, discrimination, education, housing, and unemployment are all determinants of health. Healthy People 2020 places new emphasis on the social determinants of health while continuing to address the full range of determinants. Health starts in our homes, schools, and communities. Meet Carla, a six-year-old African-American girl. Carla lives in an urban area. She doesn't have any parks or playgrounds close to her apartment building, so she does not get enough daily physical activity. Carla takes the bus to school and back, Carla's grandmother stays with her after school. Carla typically watches four hours of TV a day. Carla's apartment building is old and in need of repair, exposing her to mold and lead dust. Now, picture an intervention that can change Carla's determinants of health. 
The school board and the local health department work together to keep the gym at Carla's school open later on weekdays and on days when the school is closed for vacation. This provides community members with a safe space to exercise and play for free. Now, Carla's grandmother meets her at the gym after school. Carla's physical activity level increases as she spends more time playing with friends at the gym and walking around the track with her grandmother. She is spending her after school hours at the gym, which means she's watching less TV and has less exposure to mold and lead dust. Let's look at another example. Meet James, a 76 year old Caucasian man. James can no longer drive and relies on public transportation to get around. He lives in a low income neighborhood surrounded by convenience stores and fast food restaurants. James has to take the bus to get to the closest grocery store. Diabetes runs in his family, and James was recently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. What type of intervention may benefit James? How about a subsidized farmer's market within walking distance to James' apartment? The City Health Department and a statewide farmer's organization create a local farmer's market program in James' community. The program is subsidized by the city, which allows farmers to sell fruits and vegetables at a lower cost. The farmer's market program targets high-density, low-income neighborhoods like James. Now, James walks to the farmer's market each week, increasing his physical activity level. He's eating more fruits and vegetables now that he can afford them. James is also eating less canned food high in sodium. James' new diet and increased physical activity are helping to keep his blood sugar under control. Public health interventions typically target one or more determinants of health through information, policies, and programs. Each intervention is designed to produce a specific health outcome or outcomes. Outcomes could include positive behavior change, reduction in diseases, conditions, and their risk factors, fewer injuries, improved well-being and health-related quality of life, and increased health equity and reduced health disparities. This is at the core of the Healthy People 2020 framework. So uh, what they're showing you there is that they, uh, they showed you a couple of individuals who would benefit from certain interventions, like allowing the goal to have a place to play, right? You can exercise, that helps her be healthy. Uh, the older man, have a, an area where you can get fresh food and vegetables, have a market, instead of eating all that fast food and something like that. So those are things that are interventions or policies that we can encourage, uh, you know, to encourage healthy people. So those are the things we're talking about, okay? So there's four uh, measures of Healthy People 2020, and so these are the four you should be well this Measure of the general health status, so how healthy are people, so where they're at in their design, uh, measures of health-related quality of life and well-being, uh, determinants of health, and disparities in inequity, okay? So those are the main um, determinants of health. So one of, the, one of the four key health issues in the U.S., um, I mentioned four things that cause the health health issues. So anybody want to uh, toss any of them out, volunteers? What, what is a, there's four of them. Anybody want to throw one out? Just say it. Yeah. Um, lack of exercise. Yeah, lack of activity. So if you're not getting enough exercise, it could affect your health in the long run. Anything else? What were the other ones? Smoking, tobacco use, right? Maybe smoking. There's two more. Excessive alcohol. Too much drinking? Uh, poor nutrition. Yeah, not eating a good diet. So those are the four. Okay. So you guys have people, right? So those are the four issues. So how do these health objectives help improve health among Americans? So once again, um, the main uh, objective of this book was, you know, we want to promote health. We want to try to encourage healthy behaviors in people through, one, we're doing education here, but two, promoting it, right? Trying to get people more active, trying to get people to eat more better foods, trying to get people to avoid things like, like here we have an assembly about smoking and vaping, right? We try to um, tell you the, the dangers of that. And so you don't start doing that, and that can affect your health for your whole life. So once again, it's more about just promoting healthy behaviors. And that's how we use these objectives to try to, and we try to reach more people. Um, so that's important. All right, so once again, uh, we talked about the determinants of health. The term defines as a range of personal, social, and health environment factors. So one of the, um, the things that influence the determinants of health, 
Let's go through that. So basically, what influences your health? Um, number one, you're born with a certain set of genetics, right? Your parents give you genes. And when you have those genetics, um, certain things can be avoided. For instance, some people have natural genes for high blood pressure, high cholesterol. Um, you may have genetics that predispose you to things like cancer. So it's, it's a good idea always to know if you have any family history of certain things like heart disease, cancer, things like that. Because um, that way you can prepare yourself. So for instance, there are females that uh, certain genes will give uh, females uh, cancer around their 40s. It's very common, it's a gene, and you can test for that. So you can see if you have that in your family. Or if you have high cholesterol in your family, you want to prevent heart disease, right? So you can take medications. Or high blood pressure. Or if you've had heart attacks and strokes in your family before, let's say, 50, 55. Those are things you need to be aware of because uh, those could affect you, okay? So uh, those are definitely influences, but probably the biggest influence is what we do day to day, and that revolves around those four things. Our lack of activity, right? So physical activity is, um, so here you're on school, you take a PE class or sports, you're active for maybe a couple of years, and then after that, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing to be active? Well, if you walk to school, you ride a bike, if you play a sport, you know, if you do something, get your heart rate up a few times a week, that's the goal. But a lot, a lot of people just, once they're done with that, they just kind of maybe play games, watch movies, sit on their phone, and don't get enough activity. So lack of activity is a problem. Uh, we'll talk about why it's important for a lot of things. Poor nutrition, we're going to get into diet as well. And what are some things you should be eating, what things you should be avoiding. Um, our modern diet is pretty, pretty poor, meaning we eat a lot of processed foods, a lot of sugary foods. Um, of course, these things taste really good, so they're hard to avoid. In fact, they're addictive. Um, but once again, if you can add certain foods to your diet, especially like whole foods, like fruits and vegetables and grains, those are really good for you. Uh, excessive alcohol consumption. So they used to think a little bit of alcohol, like wine or something, is okay for you. Apparently, um, uh, even a little bit of alcohol is long term is not. But especially if you drink a lot, um, you can have all the effects on you over your lifetime. So there could be different um, types of things that you so Drinking a lot is not really good for you. And then, of course, smoking, um, once you start tobacco with the user or baby, um, that has long term health effects. So use all these things together contribute to all the different diseases we see with people. Right? Um, as you age, lack of activity and poor nutrition can contribute to things like heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. Right? Same thing with alcohol. Um, you can get those things from drinking too much. Tobacco use is, contributes to cancer and uh, heart disease. Okay, so those are things, these things all affect you as you age. So once again, we wanted to look at each of those individually. Other things that affect you include social factors. So social factors are you know, who are the people around you that influence you? You know, when you hang out with your friends, what are they doing? What are they eating? Are they smoking? What are they doing, right? Your family, what do they do? Your uh, family influences you a lot. What do you guys eat? Um, are there drinkers in your family? Uh, people that take drugs, you know, things like that. So how's the family affect you? Access to health services is just um, basically if you have insurance and health care. So hopefully you're all, uh, you should all be insured with your parents. You have access to doctors and hospitals. Um, I would recommend that you go get a, <coughs> a checkup once a year, um, even when you're young, you just keep on that schedule. So it's a good idea to get a checkup. Um, some people just go to the doctor when they get sick, but you should probably go uh, once a year to get a checkup. Uh, policy making, we talked about that, where government can do things like make parks or farmers markets or whatever, they can encourage healthy behaviors. Uh, and then there's various health disparities. So there's disparities among like race and ethnicity. Uh, people without health insurance, sex and gender, economics and education, so poverty levels, geographic location where you live, because that's access to things, sexual orientation, and disability. So those things can all affect um, whether or not people have access to or getting adequate um, health behaviors, right? So once again, um, particularly um, people with uh, high poverty levels, and people who live in the country, have poor access to things because they're kind of out, and there's no hospitals and healthcare and stuff. And what you'll see with people at uh, lower income or poverty levels, you'll see higher rates of things like obesity and poor behavior. So when you see that, there's more health issues, right? So once again, you'll see that um, associated with those things. All right, so one of the determinants of health that affect that are identified in this section. So once again, 
what influences your health? Does anybody want to give an example of that? Uh, what are some of the influences on your health? Mom, you have one?
five years resolution is to be much more supportive of my students by engaging in positive activities that will support them in the future and by holding them more accountable to make sure they're not doing activities that will not support them in the future, such as being on the phone during class. Right? And I plan on a resolution is to use more consequences in order to encourage students to do good behavior, such as attention and how suspense and so forth. Do you have one of your resolutions?
I might need help. Step four. I might need help. Step four. Uh, it's time me to create a me poster that includes my New Year's res resolution. Stay as a simple command. Picture that goes along with it. 
right? You're going to use the uh, resolution that you already stated to step two. All right. And then you're just going to add the quote that you already picked for step, step three. And you can use Canva, or if you don't like using the computer program, you can draw it on a piece of paper. Okay. Okay? All right. You can even, if you wanted to, Matthew, make your poster, get a piece of paper, you can print out a picture, and glue it on the paper, you can print out the quote, type the quote, and print it out, tap on the paper, glue it on the paper, and then uh, type out your resolution and put that on the paper. Okay, you can get as creative as you want with it. All right. Joking, of course you can, that's why I just said it. <coughs> Let's do column <coughs>
I think I finished it. Finished it? Awesome. Do you want me to take a look at it? Yeah. I can barely take a knee right here anymore. Can I see it real quick? Yeah. Thank you. Is this, your, is this your own quote, or did you find this somewhere? Oh, I, I think I created the background Canva as a poster and then put my quote there. Is this quote a quote you made up, or is this like you found this quote somewhere? I made it up on a Google Doc. I like your words, man. I really do. Okay, and then for this part, like... For this, uh, what? So your New Year's resolution stated is a simple command, like cook more often, read more books. What is your New Year's resolution? Uh. You could say because I know, I know, I know. There's so many great ideas in here, right? Yeah. But overall, what is the main I idea? What is your influence? yes, yes? What's your main resolution? Yes, just be more attentive. Be more attentive? I like that. Yeah. So on, on your, uh, on this part, you can keep your quote, and then you can put like New Year's resolution, be more attentive, or you can just say be more attentive. All right. Okay? And okay. that's awesome. Great job, man. I really, I really like your, your thoughts on that. All right. Thank you. One second. One second, because Chris is in the middle of asking me a question, then I'll go back to the court. I like it. So, so yes. So for the quote, guys, I like I like how you're using your own words, right? Use your own words and keep it. And if you want to do that as a quote and put it in your thing, go ahead. But then also, part of it is identifying a quote from something somebody that's already said it. So still go back, keep your quote. Then give me a quote from someone. You know, like famous as they call it. Is there any CSAs out there? Now I'm just even on the phone. Do what? Don't be stuck. You can use your resolution perfect, and then you can do, um, you can upload, so you can do it like upload a, uh, uh, a text, you can do a graphic in there, whatever you want to do, and then plug it in there. So if you find it, how many pictures you want to put that go along with your resolution, where'd you find them? So find some that go along, and then you can upload it in there, okay? Thank you, sir.
you think is a good? You want to do it? You think it's a good quote for the New Year? That's your quote, New Year. That's good. That's awesome. And it's pretty easy, right? To you? And then a picture, a graphic. I couldn't find like the who, whoever made the New Year in the news. So you find your service. We said New Year. We find.